in terms of people believing uh, she is honest and trustworthy. Trust is really going to hurt her in the long run. Again, let's take a deep breath here. I've never had a subpoena. We sent her a subpoena. Couldn't be more plain, the Honorable Hillary R. Clinton. I did not email any classified material to anyone on my email. Classified information was transmitted on the private server that she ran out of her home. I did not send nor receive anything that was classified. The FBI is now looking into the private email system that Hillary Clinton used. Maybe the heat is getting to everybody. Despite her repeated past denials, the intelligence community's inspector general now says two of her emails should have been classified top secret. That's one of the highest levels of classified Wow, as more and more classified emails surface, Hillary Clinton continues to deny she yucks it up, just making light of her potential criminal, certainly unethical activities. Joining me now to dive into the latest scandal is Washington Examiner investigative reporter Sarah Westwood. And Sarah seems to be one of the few in the media looking for truth on this. She's doing her job. I'm glad she's here. Sarah, what is the latest on this latest scandal? Well, we're seeing dozens and dozens of Hillary Clinton's emails that have been classified, some all the way up to top secret. Now we're seeing conflicting answers from the company that managed Hillary Clinton's server and the Clinton campaign itself as to when data was moved off the server that's now in FBI custody. The company is saying that data was moved off in June of 2013. The Hillary Clinton campaign is saying they didn't erase it until January of this year. So it's raising questions as to whether in the intervening months that was being stored on a second server. Uh, I'm curious, how did that company there in Colorado, how, how did they get this gig? I mean, th this is big stuff to have uh, the, the server there that would, um, uh, would house Hillary Clinton's emails. How did this little outfit get the gig? That's a great question. They've been described by former employees as a mom and pop shop. They didn't have security clearances to be handling classified information. But what we do know is some of the executives of that company are well connected to the Democratic Party. They worked with John Hickenlooper, who was the governor of Colorado. They also uh, were big donors to the Democratic Party. So that's perhaps how they had an in with Hillary Clinton. Well, it sounds like it's a tangled web, and we appreciate the journalists who do their job to untangle some of this. Uh, from your view now, Sarah, what's the timeline from here? Where do you see this going? Well, we'll see a lot more pressure be put on the Clinton camp when Congress comes back into session. You've seen the Judiciary Committee and the Senate take this up, the House Select Committee on Benghazi take this up in the other chamber. And we're seeing next week, in fact, some of Hillary Clinton's top aides will be coming in for closed door depositions with the Select Committee on Benghazi, including Cheryl Mills, who has been at the center of a number of Clinton controversies for decades. So we're going to see more uh, details emerge from the twin probes of Congress and the FBI. Okay, and it sounds like the public may not be privy to some of the testimony uh, in this case and as it um, is connected to Benghazi until about October 22nd. Unfortunately, you know, for us, that's a long time away because we too want to get to the bottom of it. So, uh, you know, we certainly rely on the media, reporters like you, as I say, to do the job and get information. Uh, speaking of information, more out there, perhaps about a second device or a server that that has been wiped clean. Can that be recovered? What's the latest on this other piece of equipment? Well, we're just not sure where it is. We know that Hillary Clinton made copies of her emails. Some of those went onto a thumb drive that has been uh, recollected by the FBI, and some of it went onto a device that has not yet been identified. The Denver company that handled these emails has said they're not in control of that device anymore. But we know that they were, in fact, copied about two years ago. Uh, the company has said there's no useful data left on the server that the FBI has. And yet, investigators have expressed optimism that they will be able to recover some of those emails, kind of the same way they did with Lois Lerner's so-called missing emails at the IRS. So we'll just have to wait and see what the FBI is able to pull off that hard drive.
Okay, and, and sending and receiving emails is a two-way street. Someone had to have received, obviously, the emails that she sent. Where are the other parties in all of this, and how do you track them down? Well, she communicated with so many different types of people, not just in the U.S. government, but in foreign governments as well. If you just take a look at the few emails that have been published, you see her communicating with her counterparts across the world. But we do know that some of her aides were, in fact, using a private account on that same server, including Huma Abedin, her deputy chief of staff. Those aides have been ordered by the State Department to also hand over their private emails. And we know that Abedin, who is the wife of Congressman Anthony Weiner, is still holding out on her emails. She hasn't turned over records to the State Department as of yet. Well, perhaps it is because um, some of that ilk believe that they are above the law. And uh, that is a disappointment for the electorate to uh, have to assume that some people operate in that, um, in that way. So thank you, Sarah, for doing your job and for your bosses allowing you to get out there and have the tools to get to the bottom of this. Thank you, Sarah. Now, up next are veterans who put it all on the line for us. Well, it's up to us now to fight for them. One of America's finest, he's here next, talking about helping his fellow veterans and how you can help.